This 1977 CB404 project has been the subject of our last few videos. Today's episode focuses on getting the bike back into one piece and back on the road for the first time in decades. I know the previous owner had it running, but I want a good old fashioned road adventure and not just down the road and back when the weather is nice and when the carbs cooperate. This rig still needs a lot of work before we get it riding. It's missing the front brakes, cylinder head, exhaust, carburetors, you get the idea. So the question today we will answer is, can we make a bunch of changes to this bike and then make it 200 miles home without issues? Let's find out. Never been touched. There's not a mark on it. I think this chain will suffice too. I don't know. I'm sure people have opinions about me running a 50 year old chain or however many old years old it is, but uh, some of the links are a little stiff, but it's not too rusty. It's got a lot of grease on it. Get this wheel off. we've got left to do on the bike is put the head gasket on. We've got a new head gasket imported from Japan. This one's actually a little bit thicker than the stock and it has some metal rings around the oil orifice. So hopefully this one won't leak. The past one was kind of dripping oil from the head gasket right around the pressurized oil orifice. It's a pretty common problem, I take it, because there are several different options for upgraded head gaskets on these if you order from Japan. I had a hard time finding any head gasket of any quality in America, but in Japan they seem to be readily available. You can get a whole gasket kit from 4 into one or something like that, and I do buy those, but I don't recommend using the head gaskets. Every time I've used one or my friends have used one, they leak within a couple hundred miles, and while it's not the end of the world on an air-cooled bike, I think we all can agree that it's probably better to just do it once and do it correctly. I also have some OEM O-rings. They're specialized orifice O-rings and they're from Japan also. Had trouble finding those, although they're in my gasket kit and they look like they're probably Viton and they're probably okay. Uh, again, I just decided I'm not gonna fool around with it. I'm gonna get everything OEM or better than OEM if possible. I've got the rear tire on. 
Got the front tire on. I think we're gonna take the chain back and dip it in the ultrasonic cleaner for a little bit. Kind of going back and forth on whether I should use this old chain. On one hand, it doesn't really seem like there's anything wrong with it. it just looks a little bit dirty. You know, it doesn't seem like it's out of spec or anything like that. Cannot complete the head job. I've got to leave the rocker box off because I have misplaced a bunch of parts for this bike. I'm pretty certain they're at my house. Uh, when I pulled them off this bike and brought them back for cleaning, I think they just got separated from the other larger parts and things have been a little bit chaotic. That's why, you know, I'm working on this part-time up here and part-time at home. So ideally next weekend when I come up, we'll be able to put the brakes on. We'll be able to or the front brakes rather. I've got new stainless steel brake lines and a caliper rebuild kit, brake master rebuild kit. And if we can get the rocker box on, get the exhaust on, get the carbs on also, which I'm not looking forward to. Never gone through a bank of four carbs before. <laughs> I know how carbs work and how to sink them and all that. And, you know, but when they're all crammed in and there's four of them makes me a little bit nervous we're gonna poke at that if i get some time this afternoon i might polish the pipes up that might be somebody else's job if they want to hang out next weekend don't know but the goal for today is to get the head on and get it torqued down and just have one less thing to do for the next time the lofty goal would be to put this together the rest of the way and then drive it back, but I think that's a really dumb idea. I'm not saying I won't do it, but it's also kind of lofty from a timing perspective. So we'll have to see. Again, the next part here, we're just going to be putting that head gasket on and trying to get this thing buttoned up as much as we can anyhow. Hey folks, we're gonna quickly get the valves back on this head. It's been cleaned and the other end here has been milled. It's a very pretty surface, however, uh, I'm trying to protect it. So we're only gonna do one at a time. Some of these get stuck, the clearances are so tight. Uh, but these have all been lapped and cleaned. Got these little shims. I'll show you how this all goes together. Basically, we have our bigger sp spring or the beehive, I think it's called. So that's like this. You can see here a little bit the there's a more compressed area here on the bottom and taller piece on the top. The more compressed area goes on the bottom when it's inserted in the valve head. And the reason for that is is this is a little bit heavier than this side and it makes the makes it easier for the valve train to function. So we'll make sure that we've got those in the right order. I don't think it's going to blow up if you don't do that, but you should do your due diligence. New valve stem seals. Here's our overnight parts from Japan. We got our oil ring orifice, orifices, orifici. The old ones were blue and they didn't feel, um, I don't know, these feel a little more supple perhaps.
Here's our new <clears throat> improved head gasket. Thankfully, I've got some instructions here in there, uh, you know, in English and everything. I believe when I translated this, they're saying to use an additional uh, couple newton meters of torque on this head gasket because it's 1.6 millimeters thick and the OEM one is about one millimeter thick. You can see here we've got the compression rings <clears throat> around the oil orifice, orifici, orifices. So hopefully that will prevent leakage in the future. We decked the head too, so you know, plenty of insurance here, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and place this down. Apparently I wasn't recording this, but I went ahead and put the slid the head on. Not too exciting. A little bit of contrast before the for the cylinder and the head, so I'm gonna have to scrub this or something. Had to turn the camera off to do some googling. <laughs> uh, could not get this over onto the sprocket here, and the reason for that is I just don't think there's enough slack to get it up and over. Usually you can do that and. Uh, the case here is rubbing up against the chain. I saw a picture of someone else doing this. So putting the camshaft in by itself, putting the chain up on this side, and then coming back, lifting the camshaft and putting on the sprocket. And uh, that seems to be the answer. So if you get stuck, really important, <laughs> really helpful. Uh, now we need to put it on top dead center for one and four. You can see in there it shows one and four. And then there's T. So there's a couple of marks on the sprocket here and here. And those are supposed to be perpendicular to the top of the head with our marks at one and four uh, top dead center. So now we'll put some thread locker on and put the screws in here and our timing should be set. I'm not going to detail the whole carburetor rebuild in this video. If you're interested in that, I have a separate video that goes over the process for rebuilding and performing a bench synchronization. In the first video, we did a quick and dirty job just to make sure we hit a runner. Now we have some fine jewelry that also happens to double as a set of fuel make it happeners. We have a brake caliper and a brake master cylinder. Admittedly, these are not the pieces that came with the bike. I've misplaced them and broke down, ordered a new set. Not new set, but an old set, but we're gonna make it new and make a mess. Pretty bummed about it, but I have all new bleeder and hoses and all that. We just need the core, basically. Really bummed about the Brake Master. I hope it turns up because it's not faded. All these were anodized, and you can see they all sun fade, and I don't know. It's a gem. <laughs> gave a. I gave the air compressor a chance to charge up and. Gave this another knock, and it seems like it's coming loose. So we'll give it another. Knock. Holy crap. <laughs> Dang. I'm gonna clean this up, but I just wanted to show you what came out of the brake uh, master cylinder. So I've since cleaned it up here. Not perfect. This is not the OEM, well it is OEM, but it's not the one that was on the bike because I misplaced it. So this one's quite a bit crustier. The anodization is faded. 
hopefully the other one turns up. But for now, we're going to ride with this one because it was cheap and it was on eBay. But this is from the plunger assembly, so we're going to rebuild that. I didn't record that part because, well, it was frustrating and it took forever. When the piston's in here, you got to get down there into the circlip. None of my pliers worked for that, so had to uh, use a solder pick and uh, some gumption. So we'll get this cleaned up and we'll put it back together and hopefully we'll put it on the bike. Factory caliper setups have a hard line to them, which has a different flare than a banjo bolt. To make the banjo fit, someone drilled out this caliper, so it's basically junk for this project. I ended up biting the bullet and buying a reproduction housing, which I wouldn't have had to do if I didn't lose the parts. I opted to spare you all on the Breakmaster assembly video, but should you attempt this rebuild yourself, know it's a total pain in the butt. Stress from personal events and the hand of God contributed to a ton of delays here, but we're getting there. The chrome looks great if you ignore the brake lines. It's been a long day and not really in the mood to film. This isn't something that's terribly interesting. However, if you guys want a video about it, let me know. Uh, I'm sure there are other videos out there about it too, but we're going to adjust the valves. Um, I know one of these is bad because I loosened it up. I had to get a special tool. So I've done lots of valve adjustments. Usually got a flathead spot here and uh, 10 millimeter. This is a nine millimeter. And then we've got these little square heads. So got a kit with various sizes online. I think some of the scooters and stuff use these, but anyway, nine millimeter with the square head in there. And I like this little tool idea. Hopefully it works well. To adjust the valves, obviously we've got to take the caps off. You've got your uh, points here. So, and then this is where we're gonna rotate our crankshaft. You could even just bump the Kickstarter if you wanted, but I'm just gonna put a breaker bar on it. I think it's a 17, looks a little bigger than that, but my memory will be refreshed here very shortly. Anyway, gonna get the valves adjusted, then we're gonna put the intake boots on. Maybe put the carbs on tonight. We'll see how tired I am and how long this valve adjustment takes. The valve adjustment's pretty straightforward, so we just set the timing to one and four on the compression stroke. The best way to do this is to take the spark plugs out, one, because you're not gonna fight the compression, and two, you can just put your finger over, feel when it's blowing, if you've never messed with this before, and then you can feel when the air's compressing. The other way, if your valves aren't too far out of spec, is the, uh, Valves should be pretty well closed. Usually there'll be a little bit of slack on there, unless, like I said, they're really tight. But typically, you'll be able to wiggle them just a little bit and feel here that gap in there. I'm impatient, so, uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do. All right, folks, I didn't record this because, well, frankly, it's not that exciting. It's really just me being frustrated. Um, tested the engine a little bit yesterday, just sprayed a little carb cleaner in there. Don't do this, but, you know, fired right up as I figured it would. So timing's probably still pretty close. Still going to check that. I had the carbs all rebuilt, ready to go, float height set, all that. Someone warned me that the four-into-one needle and seats suck and that they'll leak and I'm like well we'll give it a try well they were leaking and I had messed with it and tested it on the bench and one of them was leaking I tapped it and it quit and then two different ones were leaking this time so I decided you know I brought the extras with me uh well extras I've got the original OEM and they're in there and fingers crossed they don't seem to be leaking so I'm going to fire this up and uh, try to get the idle down to a reasonable level. Then we'll get the airbox on. I think I've been told that the airbox is easier to put on, put the airbox on first and then put the carbs on. So I don't know. It's really hard to get the carbs on, so I can't imagine just adding the airbox to that mess and not screaming, but you know. Anyway. <laughs>
this bike is pretty great. I, you know, enjoy it. Why do there have to be so many hoses and wires? I mean, there's, look at this. There's just wires and hoses and I gotta get the hose, this, this hose, all the way onto that thing. And then I gotta get this thing in there, but I gotta get around it so I can route it properly. And then I gotta figure out where these hoses go. And then, you know, make sure they're not in the way of these hoses. And then I got another hose over there I gotta figure out what to do with. And then we got some cables. It's like the air box has an air box that has an air box. And it's like, holy crap. Took it for a ride yesterday just down the street and back because, well, I don't really want to get stranded in the dark in the country. <clears throat> Have to push this poor girl back. I don't remember there being a hole in the exhaust there, but um, it's fine. Pretend we didn't see that. I think I'm going to give you guys the first cold start on this bike in who knows how long. And then I'm going to try and vacuum sink the carbs so I can put the gas tank back on it and make some room so I can sharpen some lawnmower blades because I'm not here just to fiddle with this thing. So Didn't really want choke yesterday, but it's pretty cold today, so we're going to assume that it does. <laughs> Nikes is it cold for a morning ride here in Ohio on a gorgeous October morning. This is my carb sink tool. I purchased this for my BMW, actually not for this, but uh, you'll notice that this is for two carbs and we have four. So what I'm going to do is kind of start with one as the reference <clears throat> and then move on along and uh, see where that gets us. The way this machine works is it'll tell us which one's low and which one's high, and then you can adjust the sink as necessary. There's a flathead screwdriver and an eight millimeter nut, and that's how we adjust the opening, which I think I showed in the carb rebuild, but anyway, we'll just tweak those a little bit as needed. Uh, usually the bench sinks pretty close, but we'll see because I'm not a four carb guy typically, you know. You can see here I've got the green is in the middle. And we've got our resolution here, so if I bring it down get it really fine dialed in. You can see if I turn it. <laughs> Something I forgot to do was zero this out, so probably need to fix that. <clears throat> it's really hard to twist those lock nuts. Uh, without messing up the sink there, so we're just gonna call it 99% there and then move on to the additional carburetors. We'll screw in that vacuum port, leave it on the first one, then we'll go to three and then to four. Hopefully I don't drop one of these tiny little screws and washers here, you know.
So we got about 12 volts with the bike off. If I turn it on and the headlight runs, it drops quite a bit. And I suspect, you know, activating other things. The turn signals aren't even going to work right now. So I need to charge the battery. It looks like it's kind of charging, but it may just be because the battery's so dead it can't pull the voltage up high enough. I have no idea what the alternators are like on these. Could also have a charging problem, so we're going to figure that out and uh, put the tank on while we're charging the battery and hope that we don't have any big problems. Good morning folks we've all seen the will it run video for this bike it definitely runs great and my goal was to get it running and roadworthy so another adventure this isn't my first time going on an adventure taking these bikes rebuilding them in my parents garage and then riding all the way to Kentucky so um, again hope I do this in a little bit warmer weather but we've still got some pretty leaves on the trees and uh, should be a nice sunny day in November here the bike seems to be running well. I let it sit for a week, um, knock on wood, no problems. The battery was a little weak before, but um, I was really cranking on it for a long time there. So hopefully a good solid charge will uh, keep it topped off while I'm running the cameras and keeping the navigation going. We've got about 200 miles on the back roads from Ohio to Kentucky. It's a pretty ride. Um, done it before both on old bikes on this particular mission and some just uh, commuting from work. So let's go. Got it all but buttoned up. Battery voltage looks excellent. You got a little bit of a weep from the brake lever sensor here. I think that'll be fine till we get home. you folks have made it this far thank you thank you so much I'm still blown away by the interest in my content I never imagined that I'd have this much success this early on but I'm here to 
beg and grovel and say, please consider subscribing, minimally a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm know that it should keep sharing my video. I'm not doing this for money or anything. I just like to share and I really appreciate it. Thank you folks.
<clears throat> Hello YouTube. So as you can see, I didn't really record a whole lot in the middle of our trip. We were just trying to get this home before dark because daylight savings time has taken over and well, it gets dark at 5 p.m. now. Made it home like a champ. No real issues other than remembering to turn the gas on and off. My plan now with the bike is to see if the NOS muffler that I got, I got a slip on. It looks like it's going to fit. It doesn't look like it's got a pipe. You know, it doesn't look like it needs a full system. I've got cables on the way, so a new clutch cable. I've noticed that this one kind of, well, it, it uh, has seen better days. The clutch pulls pretty hard. My hand was pretty tired. The, he the pull on the carbs is kind of heavy too. And I mean, it's a bank of four carburetors, so I expect it to be a little heavy, but there's no reason to not change out all the cables if the bike's this old. I also have a regulator rectifier combo, so hopefully it won't be charging at 16 volts anymore and maybe get a little bit more consistent, better charge. Have an H4 bulb uh, bucket coming, so you know, hopefully we can change out the light and have actual light that's usable because <laughs> this thing is pretty dim at night. It's better than some vintage bikes that I've ridden, but it ain't great. Let's see, what else we got here? <clears throat> uh, there's a little bit of a stumble right off idle in the carbs when they get hot, and my assumption is that it's um, a little bit uh, rich, and I never checked the needle so i took the carbs most of the way apart but i never did pull the needles out of them because i'm lazy <clears throat> and they looked fine however i don't know if they were in the stock position but i'm also using an aftermarket uh, pilot jet and i had bad luck with the needle and seat from that aftermarket kit so bit the bullet and spent the extra money on some oem jets some key in jets and uh, i'm gonna pull that and see if that makes a difference. Hopefully just get that off idle stumble out of the way. Overall, great bike. I've put about 400 miles on it since I got it back. This is probably a keeper. It's probably one of my favorite bikes so far. Uh, really just a joy to ride and to experience. So it's in really good shape, but I, you know, again, I'm going to ride it. I don't want it to be hidden from view. And I don't think that I'd like to come out here and look at it and not ride it. <laughs> Just kind of wanted to share the triage of the uh, multi hundred mile ride home. Oh, before I forget, yes, I will be fixing the stupid fender. I do have a replacement on order. Go subscribe, go fix your old bikes, go have some fun. Thanks for watching.